Another useful property for the drag and drop system is called mass drop. By itself, it doesn't really do anything, but it's more useful together with other properties such as dragged and dropped. This one can be used to determine which drag should be the one that the dragged item is dropped onto. With our example of three squares, we want to drag and drop the pink one on top of any of the other ones and then snap it to whichever it was dropped on. With the mass drop property, we can then decide which one it should pick. For this, we first of all want to rework the dragged func function we created earlier so that it allows any drag to be snapped to any other drag. To do that, we simply use the snap function on the first item in the dragged items list and set it to the location of the drag it was dropped on. We also need the if statement that checks if the dropped on drag isn't none to make sure we don't get any error messages. Other than that, we don't need any of the other code we had in here before. Now we can set the mass drop property to true for the pink drag and make sure that all of our drags are using the drag property with the dragged func function. For this example, I'll leave out any other properties that cause functions, but will include the drag race and drag name properties. This is just to make sure that they don't interfere with this specific test. To demonstrate how this property works, I have also arranged the yellow and green drags so they are overlapping each other, which looks like this in the game. Now if we drag the pink square so that our mouse cursor is overlapping both the yellow and the green square, and then drop our pink drag, we can see it's snapped to the yellow one. That's because when the mouse drop property is set to true, the drag that was picked as the one dropped on is the one that was under the mouse cursor and came first in the code. That means it ignores how much overlap there is between the dragged item and the other drags when determining which to drop on. If you instead want to pick the drag that overlaps the dragged one the most, you want to set the property to false instead. Now when we test this, we can see that when we drag the pink over the yellow and green one and then drop it, it will snap to whichever it overlaps the most. Now all the other functions for the other properties that has a parameter for the drag that was dropped on will contain the drag that was picked according to this property. The activated property is used to run a custom Python function when the mouse is pressed down on a drag before being released. This can be used when you want something to happen before the player starts dragging the drag but I pressed down the mouse button on it. As a test to see when this function runs, we can create a function called for example drag activated and give it one parameter called dragged items. Then we can print out the name of the currently dragged item which we do by grabbing the first item in the list and then accessing its drag name. Then we'll add the property to the yellow drag and specify the name of the function it should run. Now when we run this and press down with the mouse button on the yellow drag, we can see the console prints out the message yellow, so we know that it's working as it should. The dragging property will run a custom python function when a drag is being dragged. That means for every movement we do with the drag, the function will run. To test this, we can create a python function, name it for example dragging func, and give it one parameter according to the documentation. This parameter will contain the drags that are currently being dragged and I named it dragged items as usual. In here, let's print out the name of the drag being dragged to the console like we've done in previous examples. Then we can add this property to any drag we want. And for this example, I'll test it on the yellow drag and make sure to refer to the function that should run. We'll also make sure to again remove any other properties that runs functions to make sure they don't interfere with this test. When we run the game and press the mouse button down on the yellow drag, nothing is being printed out in the console, but as soon as we start moving it around, we can see that for each movement, the function is being called. The last property we'll have a look at is called clicked. This one will run a custom Python function when the player has clicked on the drag that is used on. This one, unlike the activated property, triggers when the mouse button has been released rather than pressed down. To use it, you as usual, create a python function and name it something appropriate. The function does not take any parameters however, so you won't be able to tell which drag was clicked or do anything to it inside the function. In this case, I'll print out a message that says a drag was clicked. Then I'll add the clicked property to all the drags and set it to use the function I just created. Then when we run the game and click on any of the drags, we can see the message a drag was clicked being printed out in the console. If you want to be able to tell which drag was clicked on, you're better off using the activated property we had a look at before. The function you create for that property will have access to the drag that the mouse button was pressed on, but again it will run when the mouse button is pressed rather than released, so keep that in mind. 
With that said, this is the end of the tutorial, so I hope you liked it and found it educational. If you did, you can show your support by clicking the thumbs up and leaving a comment down below to let me know. Also, I have a Patreon where you can support the channel, so do check that out as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.